grew up in Dorai in Ayrshire with my twin brother, so that was kind of the reason I got into football was because obviously I just followed him about and annoyed him when we were younger. People probably thought my mum and dad had twin boys because I was just kitted out in Rangers kit the full time playing football, always had a ball with me wherever I went. It was obviously good because we had the same interests and um, we got on really well, so that was a good thing as well. I think our first game was actually the 6-1 the win against Dunfermline when we won the league. Um, we hadn't been to <clears throat> a game before that and then I think my dad just got tickets in the off chance and then obviously it ended up being one of the biggest games, 50th league title and a lot of goals. So that was my, my first game and I think I remember my dad saying he thought we were going to sit at the game and, and look about and not really be interested but we were both we were actually on TV that day we had me and Jack hats on and my brother's sat, sitting like that uh, with one of the goals and um, yeah it was it was good and I think after that obviously it was such a big occasion that day just fell in love with Rangers. And you spent time as that a teacher as well what was that like? Yeah, it was good. Um, that was obviously difficult. I was trying to balance a full-time job with part-time football. So I think when I was when I was doing that, I, I taught for three years. I think I kind of realised at that point how how much effort it took from my mum and dad to make sure I got to football when I was younger. Because um, there was periods where I was training up at the training centre four nights a week, and my mum was working all day and then driving me up there and not getting back till ten at night. And I think. When I was teaching, I think I realised how much effort and time that would have took her, and that's kind of when I appreciated, you know, the things they'd done for me. It was always in the back of my head I wanted to be a professional footballer, but I think when I started my teacher training, I think there, there could have been an opportunity if I if I pushed it to, to go professional, but I decided at that point and what age I was at and stuff that I think it was better just to, to sort my career first and then, you know, it was obviously a risk. I was hoping that the opportunity would come up once I was fully qualified and thankfully it did. But um, I think it was good time and I think everything kind of worked out exactly how I, I would have wanted it. And, you know, I plan on going back to teaching after. I, I really enjoyed it, but it's quite a time consuming career as well. And when you were young and, and grown up, did you see professional football as an option or, or at what point did that become a, an option for you? No, it wasn't anything. Obviously, women's football was so far behind at that point when I was growing up. Um, even when I was at Rangers and we were training at night time, I think we were in at 8 o'clock at night after all the boys finished. We didn't finish till 10 o'clock and then you know I was coming back to Dorai and up early for school the next morning and at that point there was I don't even think I would have thought about being a professional footballer. I think it was when I was at Durham and, and things were obviously starting to change and um, Rangers obviously went professional at that point and other teams in England were starting to catch up. I thought that, that could be a possibility for myself but I think when I was growing up and when I was young it was never really anything I thought about. Have you ever had any experience of doing this sort of work before at any other clubs? Or? Uh, no, it's just started here with Nanjikin, so that's the first thing I And do you feel it's beneficial to you yeah, as a player? Yeah, definitely. I feel a lot stronger now and I've only been doing it for a few months and you can already feel the benefits on the pitch and it's a lot better. And you did spend a number of years at Rangers before, like you touched on there. What was that like and what are some of your memories from that time? Yeah, I think I was there for about five and a half years um, and obviously as a Rangers fan it was it was amazing. I didn't actually get signed when I first I came on trial and I didn't actually get signed. I remember having, I think it was Gary Gibson who was the coach at the time, I remember having the conversation in the just outside the physio rooms um, just to say that at that time they didn't feel I was ready and I was still playing with uh, co-winning at that point so the plan was just to train with Rangers a couple of nights a week and then play for co-winning still and I think at that point, obviously, as a, a young player and a Rangers fan, it was it was disappointing. But um, I think setbacks are good like that. I think I just went away and was more determined. And then obviously, when I did sign, everything went really well after that. Go in and sports club. That's where I played for quite a while. I think I left my boys team when I was 12 and then obviously not allowed to play. I think you weren't allowed to play with a boys team after the age of 12 so I moved to co and played for the co and girls under 13s. 
and then I was there for about four or five years, can't remember exactly. So we're just going there, that's where I trained. I think it was good playing with the boys, I think you could kind of tell when you joined a girls team who had played with a boys team because I think you were a bit tougher. Um, you were obviously used to boys being faster and stronger than you, so I think it was definitely a good thing for me playing with the boys when I was younger. I think that's kind of what got that kind of, like, I like tackling and stuff like that. I think that's where I got that from, from a young age. And then obviously <clears throat> just continued that into playing girls football. Come on yeah. in, I'll show you. Thank you. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll get hunted for that picture. <laughs> yeah, I know, that'll be good. <laughs> Thank you. I've seen it on Facebook, it's on my right. Facebook somewhere. No, see, see if I can find it. Would you yeah. be able to find it? Because it is a, it's a good team show. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'll be able to find it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Move the chairs around. Yeah. Alright, there's a sign here. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. So, can I just leave these two in here? Yeah. And then I'll uh, yeah. nip out. That'd be great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. I'll try and find that picture. Right? <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks. What are your memories from playing here? Um, yeah, just remember obviously enjoying my football. Um, I think we had quite a good team back then. Uh, quite a lot of the girls still played. Um, up until recently, so yeah, it was good. Just, just kind of remember, just enjoying my football. Not really too much about my time here, but just remember coming down and enjoying it all. Yeah, and what's it like to be back here today? Now, obviously, you're your captain of Rangers. Yeah, it's good. Um, obviously, seeing some people that were here, and then you know, just seeing how much the place has changed as well is good. Um, it's obviously nice to hear that they're still doing well on the, the girls' side of things, so yeah, it's nice to be back. When I got signed for Rangers, that was when I kind of managed to really take off in terms of got involved in the Scotland under-19s when Shelley Kerr was manager. As a young player, I didn't get picked for the under-17 Scotland squad. I was always at camps but never made the final squad, and I think there was points then where I just thought that, you know, I was good, but I was never good enough. And then when Shelley Kerr was under-19s coach, I eventually got picked and, and played my first game against Sweden over in Le Manga and I think at that point that was when I really started believing myself and um, I think that was kind of one of the turning points where I thought that I'd started believing in myself a little bit more which was good. Angie Hind and Michelle Barr were my coaches at Rangers um, the, the season we finished second. Um, I think that was the only time we finished quite high up the table before the girls obviously won the league last year. So they came in, um, must have been around 2014, I think. And Angie was obviously assistant coach of the national team, so she was a very good coach. Michelle was still playing at that point, so she was kind of coaching the team and playing. Um, and I think when they came in, they managed to get a lot of big names because of who they were. As a player, you look back and you've got certain coaches that you, you remember just having a massive impact on your career. And I think they two were the, the coaches for me that just took me to another level. I think before that, I probably wasn't really that focused or, you know, obviously I was I was bothered, but I think they just came in and it was all about winning and, and demanding standards every single day. And I think at that point, I kind of changed as a player when they came in. So they came in and then Andrew left to go to America to coach at a university team. And then she phoned me like, a couple of months after and obviously knew I was at university here and, and said how would you feel about coming over and transferring and it, going to America was something I thought about doing so when she said that and obviously I had such a good relationship with her and Michelle that I thought yeah why not so um, ended up getting all the paperwork sorted and I ended up leaving in January I think it was 2015 so um, headed over to America. It was obviously scary I hadn't been away from home for any period of time really I was I've, I've always been at home so um, it was exciting but it was also scary but um, I think once I got over there and obviously I knew the coaches I think that helped massively um, yeah it was it was amazing um, 
so I moved over in January so it was quite good that I kind of had Christmas and then I went over there and yeah I was over there for, for two and a half years and it was good. My mum came over quite a lot to visit um, in the summer and then I came home at Christmas time so it was good that I could get home as well but yeah it was just it was different the the, the quality of football the way they played the, the, the standard of athletes more than anything it was it was a lot different and, and obviously being away from home as well it just I think it definitely matured me as a person as well I remember one day um, I was in such a mood after the training I don't know if it was it probably would have been because of me or my team lost or something I hated losing and I just started kicking all the footballs in such rage and, and Angie pulled me in her office after and had a go at me and, and I, I tried to defend myself and say I was just helping collect the balls in but I clearly was fuming um, so it's just little things like that I remember but I think that's that's what I needed like they knew how to get the best out of me so I feel like the, the two and a half years I was there I definitely improved as a player and, and as a person as well. And after your time in America is that when you joined Durham? Yeah so I was back home um, June 2017 I think it was so I was home for a few months and then moved to Durham and done my masters there and then obviously played part-time as well. The first couple of years were difficult for me because I had a lot going on so I don't think I really focused much on my football at that time but I think you know when I, I reflect I don't think it's really that I don't I'm not hard on myself because obviously um, you have a lot going on and Again, I had just been home, so it was it was nice that I could just drive three hours up the road if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed my time at Durham. I think the last kind of couple of years we were we finished second one year. The the club was growing, the league was really competitive, and that's what I really liked about being in the championship was every game was close. Like the top could take points off the bottom and vice versa. Like you you couldn't predict the scores, and I think. That was what I really liked about that league was how, how competitive it was. And when did you first find out that, that Rangers were interested in, in a professional contract and signing you? Um, I can't remember exactly. I think it was late on. I had planned on leaving teaching anyway, so I'd, I'd quit my job and then didn't really have a, a plan in terms of what I was going to do. I was just taking a risk and hoping things would work out. But I knew kind of January of last year that I wanted to be home. Uh, I had been away f for seven and a half years in total, including the time in America. And I think you kind of just realise that you, you kind of reach a point where you're like, right, I want I want to be home. So in January, I kind of realised that I wanted to be home and obviously spoke to my agent and said that was something I wanted to do. And he started reaching out. And um, obviously when I found out that, that Rangers were interested, then I wanted to come here. That was the only place now that I think about it, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine coming home and not playing for Rangers, it would be so weird. So, yeah, I'm just glad it all worked out because there was points where I didn't think it was going to happen, but, um, yeah, glad it happened. To be fair, when I came back, I, I knew quite a lot of the girls from Scotland under 19s or just from playing in Scotland previously. So I feel like I settled in quite quickly, which was, was good for me. Um, and then I think it was Glasgow Women. We obviously played at Broadwood, we had a good crowd scored a lot of goals so it was it was um, a really good start. Yeah and for you to, to captain the side as well what does that mean to you? Yeah obviously when that happened I wasn't expecting it at all I was just happy to be home and, and back playing at Rangers but I think it was in Spain Malky had spoke about it and you know he gave his reasons why and obviously you're not going to if, if he asks you if you want to be captain of Rangers you're not going to turn that down so um, yeah it was a shock to me but something that I, I felt that wouldn't really change me. I, I just keep doing what I was doing, and and that's obviously what they liked. And um, yeah, it was it was obviously nice captain and Rangers and the, the Champions League and stuff like that as well. Yeah, and you touched a bit on Scotland youth level there as well. Do you have aspirations to to make the squad at, at some stage? Yeah, it's it's something that I've had in the back of my mind for a while. Um, I think when I came back from America, obviously I lost my mum, so I think as I said, like I didn't really focus much on football, and I think that probably would have been the prime time for me to, to try and push but as I said it's not something I regret, it's something I had to deal with and, and process so um, but now hopefully uh, being back home, being professional, uh, obviously I got injured last year which I felt was probably bad timing because I was hoping that being home and, and playing in the Champions League would give me a good chance but it's still something hopefully that I can do, all I can do is play well for Rangers and, and see 
And you obviously do wear pink on, on your wrist as well, do you want to tell us that, a bit about that? Yeah, so when I had moved to America I was there for a couple of weeks and my mum got diagnosed with breast cancer, so obviously in America they're quite big on the raising awareness and stuff like that, so as I said I was there for two weeks and got the phone call and it was obviously a shock, I hadn't been, I hadn't been away from home and then I was trying to deal with that at the same time, but um, obviously I was going to all these events, um, pink out, and I, I just started collecting all the t-shirts so it was like pink out for the basketball games and stuff and I started wearing pink uh, around my wrist and then I wore pink laces as well and I kind of just they normally had events in October for that um, but I just obviously my mum fighting I just thought I'll um, do it every game and it's just something I've continued since I lost my mum and I think I think it's good because when people ask me about it I'm not like I'm not scared to tell them why I think it's good in terms of raising awareness for it even if, you know, it's just every now and again people, some supporters will say, why do you wear the pink? And it's just, it's just nice to share that, that story with them. Um, it's obviously something that affects a lot of people as do other cancers. So if you can just raise a little bit of awareness whenever you can. Um, so yeah, that's why I wear, wear pink. Yeah, and um, for you now to be a role model for younger girls as well in, in football, what does that feel like? Yeah, it's, it's nice. Obviously, I think you need to take the responsibility and make sure that you are doing the right things on and off the pitch and, and being a role model. I think it's it's so exciting now for young girls. You know, I keep saying to the three young ones in our team, the, the opportunities they're going to have in their career is so exciting. And I mean, the three of them are so good. So the fact that they are only 17 and they've got another 10 plus years ahead and they're already professionals, it's just it's so exciting for them. And, um, you know, just try to to think back to when I was their age and maybe any mistakes I made or something and try and make sure that they, they do all the right things and, and just be a role model to them. And and then obviously when we're at our games, spending time with the fans at the end I think is so important because you've got so many little girls and boys that are coming to our games and supporting and I think it's important for them that they can see that they can, they can go and play professional football if they want to.